Oh, hey guys. What is up guys, Dakota here, and welcome back to the Driven Mad channel. So, in today's video, as you guys can probably tell from what's behind me and the title, we are gonna be taking a look at the rear cargo area and rear seat space, um, and rear space in general, of the Bronco versus the two-door Wrangler. So this is just gonna be specific to two doors. That's what I have here. So, what we're gonna do kind of first is just kind of talk about some of the measurements with the seats up, as far as depth and width and things like that. I'll give you guys some different things inside the back to see what fits and what doesn't. We'll fold the seats down, go over all the seats. So we're going to go over basically everything interior space wise from the front seats back. And let's go ahead and jump into some measurements. dimensions I'm going to go ahead and take the Dometic CFX3 45 liter fridge and put it in the back and just kind of show you guys the space and then we'll do the same thing with the Wrangler and throw in some other things as well so as you guys can see it fits and you can close everything and it fits just fine and as you guys can see there's also plenty of space alongside now obviously this isn't strapped down to anything so you know if you were using straps it would take up a little bit of space but you can still have a decent amount of space on here for say a backpack slide it in there and you still got room for all that and again this is with the seats up so so plenty of room it fits in here just fine and so now let's go ahead and i'll put it in the jeep and see how that does okay guys so now we're going to try to load the cfx3 into back of the jeep again with the seats up i know some of you guys in the comments are going to be screaming you can fold them down i know we haven't got there yet so um, i'm going to go ahead and put it in here and we'll see how it fits so as you guys can see you can set it in here but you definitely won't be able to close it up or anything because the way the seats are they kind of line back so you can't actually fit it in here and actually close it so if you want to have a passenger or two with you you're not going to be able to carry this thing along with the rear seats in place whereas with the bronco you can fit it in there and obviously you do still have a little bit of side storage here but it doesn't really matter because it doesn't close so you can't drive around like this all right guys so next we got this what is this 50 pound bag 33 pound bag of dog food just to kind of give you guys an extra layer of context so if we put it in, lay it down like that, you can technically go ahead and you should be able to close it theoretically. Let's see. Yes. You can fit multiple bags of dog food in here. Obviously you can stand it up and you can fit a couple of them. And now I'm gonna go ahead and show you the same bag in the Bronco. Okay, so much like with the fridge, um, this fits in here obviously with a little more ease. Than the Wrangler because again it is a longer vehicle it's a little bit wider it's got a little bit more cargo area so you can easily put this in the back and have no issues shutting it at all and obviously if you stand it up you can fit plenty of bags in there so as far as with the seats up the Bronco definitely has more space so next what we're going to talk about is how these seats fold and which one does a better job at folding and allowing for more space. For the Jeep, one of the things that I like about it is obviously you can fold the seats, but it's actually really simple to do. You literally just, you lift the tab, it folds over, and then you can just lift up with one finger, and now you've got a lot more room. And it's a flat load floor, so when you're putting stuff in, and there's a slight hump, but we're talking about an inch and a half maybe, um, but it's easier to maneuver things because there's no huge hump to get over and it's super simple. And then when you want to set it back down to use the seats, it's just simply as easy as that. And the other party trick of the Jeep is that you can actually remove the whole seat to get even more space. So it's the same thing. You flip it over, flip it up, and then there's a little bar down here where you just grab, you squeeze it, it unhooks 
and then, which I made a separate video showing that, but you squeeze it, it unhooks, and then you can just take the entire thing out, and it gives you way more space. So next what we're gonna do is get the Bronco seats ready. So as you guys can see here, they're actually 50-50 split, which is great right up until uh, you realize there is a gonna be a massive hump, which is one of the biggest downsides, and you can't remove these. So Ford got it right with the 50-50, that way you can fold one down, keep one up, and Jeep got it right with how you can easily flip it up and out of the way or remove it. If they could combine those two, that would be awesome. Jeep and Ford, if you're watching, which you're probably not, just combine the two. Like <laughs> the way this thing folds is, is fantastic compared to how these fold. So Jeep, Ford, fix it. But, so first things first, we're gonna wanna pull that first to fold the, uh, headrest down and this is actually kind of complicated you can't just fold it all down from right here you have to actually go to the front so when you're at the front there's a little tab down here and you basically have to pull this which then pops the seat forward to flip it up into position here and then it is good to go ahead and fold down so you just pull this lever it comes up and it folds right over so again you can have one seat up one seat down but then look look at that god that sucks <laughs> um that's a pretty substantial bump so again it's not a flat floor um now it, again it is nice because you definitely do get more space you can fold both of them down keep one up i'll show you guys here with both of them fold down in a second but this part just kills me and like i said you do you can't just do it all from the back you have to go front then come back to the back and then to put it up same thing, there's no real easy grab handle. You basically, I grab right here and then just pull it back up. Um, and then again, you have to go around to the front to grab the seat cushion. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and fold both of these seats down and then I'm gonna hop in and I'm gonna show you guys kind of how much room you have with both the seats folded down. And then I'll take some measurements from the back all the way up to the center armrest and I'll compare that to the Jeep. And I'm using the center armrest because Obviously with the seats, depending on how tall you are or short you are, that can change. So I wanna measure something that doesn't move uh, backwards and forwards. So I'm gonna go ahead and fold both of these down and we'll see how much space is in there. Here is the space with the rear seats folded. And as you guys can see, it definitely is more space, but again, you've gotta deal with that hump. And then because you have to flip the seat cushions up, you actually lose a little bit of space that you could have extra. Or again, if you could flip them down, flip them up like you can in the Jeep and then remove them, that would be a lot better but i'm gonna hop in here if i just kind of lean up against this real quick so i've got plenty of space if you guys see my feet are not hanging outside of the vehicle this is diagonal if i was to be all the way back again i'm about five eight five nine ish and this is me sitting all the way back up against this part right here and as you guys can see I do still have a little bit of room, but I'm not laying down. So if I was to move the seat forward and fold it forward all the way, then you get extra room, but you can't move this. Um, so you can't like necessarily lay down unless you're trying to do it diagonally, which that works. But again, this kind of gets in the way because you can't fold it forward any more than this. So moving this seat forward doesn't really do much except give you a little bit of extra storage space down here. Now. Um, some of you might know that Goose Gear actually makes a platform for this, just kind of like they do with the Wrangler. But you can get rid of just one of the seats, still keep one intact. And I think that is actually the way to go, and I might end up doing that, because then you can still keep three seats, so just in a pinch, or if you're going with two other people, you can put them in here. But you still have all of this extra space. It gets rid of the seat completely, and then you've got all of this extra space as well. And I think that's where that would really come in handy. I like the idea of the 50-50 split but to me they just they just didn't do it right they were so close and if you could have just made it to where it was like the jeep where you flip it up and then you can just remove it that would have fixed the problem and i think it would work a lot better because i mean look at that guys look at that that is almost four and a half inches that you've got right there so you kind of have to stack things on top so again just it's nice that you can split them but it it's just the way it is. It doesn't, it's not the easiest to use. Obviously you can set stuff on top and things like that. But again, it just does make it to where you can't just slide things forward and backwards in the back. 
Now, as far as getting into the back seats is concerned, you would think since the Bronco has much longer doors and larger doors openings that it would be easier to get into the back. But the seat in the front actually doesn't slide forward very far, so it's a pretty tight opening. And uh, as you guys can see here, it, it's not crazy. Whereas the Jeep, even though it has a smaller door, smaller opening, basically gives you the same space as far as getting into the back. So there's no real clear winner as to which one's easier to get into the back of. All right, guys, so I'm in the back of the Bronco. The seats are up. This driver's seat is set for, that's comfortable for me. It may be 5.9, I don't know. I haven't <laughs> measured myself in a while. Um, and I've got a decent amount of leg room, you know, from here to the back of the seat. I've got a few inches of leg room. My feet, it's a little tight down there, but, you know, not that bad. There's a decent amount of headroom, obviously. I mean, there should be no shortage of that in this boxy type of style vehicle. Um, I have good shoulder room. It's a decent back seat, and it's stadium style, so you sit up a little bit higher than um, you would on a normal crossover or a normal SUV. So you sit up a little bit higher and a little bit. Uh, towards the center now one thing that I will point out back here is that so you got a cup holder right here, which is nice um, But the armrests if you want to call it that is just in a really weird position you have to have, basically have like t-rex arms and kind of uh, Do that there's no real comfortable place to rest it right here. Obviously in the center. There's nothing but it is a Decent back seat. I mean, it's it's fairly comfortable. The seats themselves are very comfortable nice and soft I also had my pops in the back. He's about six foot tall uh, a little bit bigger dude than I am and you know he fit back here just fine so as far as space goes i mean you can definitely put two other people back here that are not you know just three-year-olds um and you'll have some decent space um also in the back if you'll notice no step but guess what else isn't here air vents whereas the wrangler has air vents back here the bronco does not but you do also get some usb ports USB C, USB A, and then a wall outlet there 110 volts, so that's nice and that's really kind of it for the back seat obviously on the backs of the front seats you get kind of you know a little bit of storage area and you can strap things to these um, but as far as the back seat space is concerned that is pretty much pretty much it and obviously you don't get the center bar here um, so the speakers are back here um, so if you are in the rear at least you'll be able to hear the sound system pretty well Again, decent amount of space, decent back seat, and compared to the Wrangler, I'd say, you know, the downsides, it doesn't have rear air vents, which when you do have people back here, some people just like to have air blowing on them. So it's just, it's nice to, it would be nice if they had added um, air vents. Also in the back, if you'll notice down here, I don't know if you guys can see that, there is actually a drain plug down here, um, and this is kind of like some rubbery material. So it's real easy to wash out and you can literally just pop that plug and then just wash the whole thing out. All right, so in the back of the Wrangler, it feels pretty similar. You got about the same headroom, about the same shoulder room. Um, now I will point out is that obviously with the speakers right here, you, it does feel like there's stuff a lot closer to your face because so just this is kind of basically where my head is. And as you guys can see, having this here, um, it just kind of gets in your way just a little bit. Nothing crazy though. And you don't have cup holders here on the Wrangler. You have them down here along with uh, four different USB ports and a 110 volt power outlet and rear air vents. Look at that. Isn't that great? <laughs> um, so very similar back here in terms of space. I think your arm will be more comfortable in the Wrangler. As far as space goes, it, the Wrangler, because it's a little narrower, kind of scoots you in a little bit more so you're, you're not your feet don't directly go underneath the seat they're kind of off to the side um, which might make you feel a bit more cramped or not they're pretty close to the same I'd say the Wrangler I think wins in terms of having rear air vents I think it wins in terms of where the cup holders are and allowing the rear passenger's arm to kind of rest a bit more naturally and it does have two more USB ports so there you go all right guys so there you have it so that was kind of a Hopefully a brief and detailed uh, look at kind of the rear seat space versus the uh, rear cargo space. Now I will point out, so from the back of the center console to the end here in the Bronco is about 53 inches, whereas in the Wrangler from the back to the back of the cargo area was about 46 inches, I want to say. So again, a little bit less. So overall, which one is better? I mean, it's, it's kind of a toss up. I'd say as far as seats folding, Wrangler's got it because you can fold them, have a flat space or you can remove them. 
but I do like being able to fold one side down and still have one for the passenger. And then obviously if you get like a goose gear system for the entire back of both, then the Bronco will actually have a little bit more space. Cause as you guys can see, this thing fits, doesn't fit in that. So anyways, guys, um, that's basically the video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope you find it helpful. Uh, if you're looking at purchasing one of these and that stuff is really important to you. If you have any questions, please feel free to leave a comment down below and I will try to do my best to answer them. If you enjoyed it, give it a like and subscribe and click that little bell notification so you get notified for the next video. And I'll see you guys in the next one.